You have brought us in mercy. Lord, we have come to your to your hospital for this day. We are asking you hearts, Lord, to cooperate with you. Help our hearts, Lord, to give you every necessary yieldedness for what your spirit desires to do with us please have your way and break the bread of life shed your word as light in our hearts and grant unto us understanding grant unto us illumination we trust you lord that as we wait on you upon each one of our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for hearing our prayers. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. What is it that causes a believer to shy away, to shrink back at the point of conflict, at the point of engaging the enemy for God. So we are looking at why God's army flees from battle. Why God's army flees from battle. I'd like you first to turn to Luke's Gospel, chapter 14. Where the Lord Jesus began to raise things, issues we call the terms of a disciple, the conditions for discipleship. And I am not really coming to dwell on those conditions or terms of discipleship, there are just a few issues. That if God opens it up, we'll be able to take our bearing properly as we begin to go into other scriptures that will illustrate the matter that God is raising with us this morning. Luke's Gospel, chapter 14. I read from verse 25 to verse 35. And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, if any man comes to me and hates not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first and counted the cost whether his heart sufficient to finish it, less happily, after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. 31. Or, what king, going to make war against another king, sitteth not down first, and consulted whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000. 
Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an embassage, he sends a delegation, and desires conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Salt is good. But if salt has lost his savour, wherewith shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land, nor yet for the dunghill, but men cast it out. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. Lord, we have ears. Cause us to hear in the name of Jesus Christ. If you also turn the same Gospel of Luke to chapter 9, verse 23, to verse 26. And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantaged if he gains the whole world and loses himself or be cast away? For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and in his Father's. And of the holy angels. I like to say again, it is not necessarily the conditions of discipleship that I want to settle on this morning. I am tracing a matter. The Bible says, salt is good, but is good. Only because, and for as long as, the reason why it was made, that of giving taste, that of preservation, that's the only thing that makes it good. The church, to feel everywhere, is good. It is better to have churches fill every space in the streets than to have beer palace and brothels. Salt is good. The church of God was meant to be a blessing on the earth. The church, which is the salt of the earth, was meant to give taste, to bring peace where there's no peace, to bring joy in the midst of sadness, to bring flavor of life in the midst of the death that is everywhere. So salt is good for taste. Salt is good for preservation. For keeping something from decay, from rottenness. Salt is good if it's able to stop corruption around its environment. Salt has the capacity to deal with decaying agents, the agents of corruption, the agents of decay. Salt is what addresses it and holds it. And Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth. Now, salt is good, but there is something that makes people to look for salt. If the salt loses its capacity to give taste and give, loses its capacity to preserve things that are wanting to decay, then it is only good for nothing. People will treat it commonly, push it on the road, and march on it. 
Because it is no more serving the purpose for which it was made. Whatever contradictions you are seeing that the church is suffering in our own time, the reason is simple. The taste, the preservation, the purpose, the calling upon the church, the saltiness is being lost. Now that's how Jesus concluded this his parable. And I was wondering what this connection of this salt matter with what he was talking about. It is because Jesus, multitudes were following him, great multitudes, and he realized that to establish the kingdom of God, it does not depend on multitudes. To enthrone Jesus does not necessarily require crowd. That does not mean that God doesn't like crowd. To enthrone Jesus actually does not require a very large army. When Jesus came on earth, he ministered to multitudes. He blessed multitudes. He preached to multitudes. But he could only raise about 120 or thereabout. A few hundreds as people he could commit the entire program of reaching the whole world into their hands. And out of this, he only raised 12 leaders. Or I should say 11. Because one lost out. And he went back to heaven. Very confident. That the whole world. Will be taken over. With the gospel. So today he saw. Multitudes following him. Because he had healed their sicknesses. He had performed many things. And needy people those who are having issues they were all crowding before him so verse 25 said there went great multitudes with him and he turned i don't know if you notice the turning the way they were singing i'm following come and see wonderful jesus come and see your oh, wonderful jesus oh, you remember wonderful jesus come and see your oh, wonderful Oh, Mela, you're so wonderful, Jesus. Oh, oh, wonderful, Jesus. Hey, hey, one. They were waving their banner and they were moving. A great multitude, trooping. Those who were healed, those they cast out demons from, those who were still bringing their own matter. The whole crowd was trooping. For me, ignorant me, if I am like that, I would have thought that I have taken over the land. If I come into Anish and I do one miracle on the street and everybody, they are singing everywhere that, hey, we believe this man, I would have thought the land is taken, but not Jesus. As he saw these people, suddenly there was something that rose up in his spirit that <laughs> you better recruit people you better define what they are putting. So he turned. Excuse me? Hello? Are you hearing me? They say, yes. Do you want to declare bread again today? He said, this time it's not bread. any of you <laughs> really wants to be somebody I can count on. If any of you will be part of the army that I am recruiting to help me 
deal with the works of darkness and they establish the kingdom of light then these are the things you must know then he started to state and state and state deny yourself take up your cross uh, hate father hate mother all of those conditions now it was as if i want you to follow me because we are going somewhere it was as if as he was speaking and telling them those kind of hard things i imagine that some of them were getting annoyed small small and somewhere we are getting embarrassed what does this man mean hate my mother for what because i want to follow him ha. i should hate my life and the way they were behaving jesus who knew the hearts of all men he said in verse 28 if you look at the beginning of 28, it started with a word. What is the word that starts verse 28? Huh? For. For. What is another way we can put that word for? Because. You don't start a discussion with because. As he was stating it, I imagine that the people's hearts were beginning to revolt. And I'm not sure that Judas was very comfortable with that message. So I don't know. This is our master. Anytime he gathers people, he, he, that's the time he will say something that will scatter them. Uh -uh. How shall we establish this ministry? Don't know if he doesn't like crowd at all. What is his problem? And Jesus said, for. If what I'm saying is, uh, is offending you, help me to answer this question. Jesus said, excuse me, which of you very wise people that you are, when you want to build a house, you just, you just come to the site because there is a uh, you ask, is there cement in the market? They say, is there rod in the market? They say, plenty. Is there uh, 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 sand? Thank you. That people can uh, get from the river? Say, ah, plenty. He say, okay. Since there are those things in the market, start my house. <laughs> he said, you very reasonable people. Is that how you normally? Build house. Help me to answer it. Which of you? Why they were thinking on that? He finished. He said, if you don't understand that one, let me tell you another parable that we say the same thing. Verse 31 starts with a word. What does verse 31 start with? Or what is the meaning of that one now? If you didn't understand the first parable, let me give you another one. This time, the parable he's given, he began to talk about warfare. And that's where we're going. He began to talk about kingdom. He began to talk about warfare. And then he said, look, <clears throat> which king wants to go to fight battle with another king? And he doesn't first of all sit down to consult with his army generals to check something. He said, look, consider two kings, King X and King Y. King X has only 10,000 soldiers. If you are reading your Bible well, you will see it. In verse 31. Why King Y has how many soldiers? 20,000. 
And King X wants to go to fight this man that has 20,000. When he himself has only what? 10,000. Now, is there a problem already? What is the problem? The other king, his army is, is double. By number, two of them cannot be compared. Please listen. As Jesus is moving everywhere, the gospel is moving everywhere, that's great. But as we are here now, I want you to know that in terms of number, you cannot compare those who are on the side of King Jesus with which people? Those who are against him. King Jesus said, as for number, I am not deceived. I'm not doing positive confession. I already know that I am outnumbered. It is not number that I'm, I'm hoping to use to win the world. Those who are fighting on the side of my enemy, King Satan, 20,000. Those that I have, they are less in number. Never you be deceived. If you come, maybe your church, you are sitting 5,000 and you have built auditorium in Onisha, 5,000. And I don't know any church in Onisha that sees 5,000. At least I've seen more than that in other cities. In some cities. Let's assume you have 5,000 that sit as a regular congregation. And something tells you, hey, we have taken over on Nisha. Are you speaking the truth? You say, God, those on the side of Jesus now, there are now too many. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let us settle down and rejoice. So, since there is a problem with number, what must happen? Jesus said, but my problem is not number. That I have 10,000 is not a problem. That I have lesser number is not a problem. Those fighting on the side of my enemy, there are so many what they are using so bogus but that's not the problem and can I inform you please it's not the size of the intimidation of the devil that God is worried about God is not concerned with how much that the enemy is arranging they say this one you know they are they are prepared to finish everywhere i know isis all over the world this one the other one is happening god is not frightened by those things he only is looking at something these ones that say they are my own are they truly my own Can I have persons that I can hold and say it's my own? He said when this king wants to go and fight, he will consult with his army generals. If he consults with them and the, the army generals say, look, ah, we have good weapons, but our type of soldiers Hey, Nakorofo. Huh? Those soldiers, they don't have good training. Those soldiers, they are so undisciplined and lousy. In fact, these soldiers, they, they are, even on the field, they have eaten so much that when they take over, they want to take over. Their stomach makes them to lie down. They are still seeing them. The big stomach does not allow them to even take proper cover. These are our soldiers. They love their lives very well. They are like uh, 
the officers that carry, you know, peacekeeping mission to other nations, and they are not ready to fight. They move only the the the, re, the recruits to the front, while they themselves are preserving their lives so that they can return back when there will be another coup. They can become governors. Those are the kind of soldiers we have, sir. <laughs> now, when the king gets this kind of report, what is he going to do? <laughs> According to this parable, he will quickly send <laughs> a peace mission, a delegation to the other king and say, Excuse me, please. Ah, ah, we didn't mean to fight you. We want us to discuss peace. <laughs> I don't know why my foreign affairs minister was speaking la 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 the other time, saying, uh, What can you do? In fact, I have sacked him. Why is he saying like that? <laughs> he knows that this <laughs> he cannot fight. It will, be, it will be suicidal to start that kind of fight. He will send a peace mission. Excuse me. We will soon see that God has been doing that kind of thing before. When God has not seen the right kind of people to use to engage his enemy in battle, God will fold up and remain silent. Allow the enemy to be parading and performing. Huh? We will soon see in the day of battle, where Goliath came to face God's people. What happened to all the people? They withdrew. And Goliath was insulting the Almighty God. I defy the armies of God. Where is that your God? And God closed mouth. God, God just <laughs> folded up and stayed quiet in heaven. He was not replying him. For 40 days, Goliath will come out and say, So, where is that your God you were posing, making mouth that he brought you out of Egypt? He frightened Pharaoh. Can't any of you trust him and come out and face me? And then I will tear him into pieces. Hey, as soon as he did that, even King Saul, he, he, ent he entered into a cave. And God did not shift. For you to know that God was not incapacitated. From time to time, God will send an angel, I imagine. Go and check. Is there any container I can use there at all? The angel will move round and round and say, ah, no, no container, sir. No vessel. He say, allow Goliath to be performing. Is it not possible that why your campus is being taken over? Why even your own, your own room that you pay for as a student, why your roommates have collected it from you and they are using it to mess up with girls. And you are the one shifting and running away. Is it not because God cannot see a life that he can use to terrorize his enemies? But you know, one day, Goliath made the mistake of his life. As he came out, he didn't realize that one container that God can use <laughs> has arrived. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> so, as he was boasting, the Bible said, and David had him. Ah, that was, that was the problem. David had him. And an angel came again and checked. And send signal to heaven and say, Baba, Baba, there is one correct life, oh, only that he is a weakling. 
He's a youth. <laughs> He's a small boy. God said, don't worry about small boy. Tell Goliath to come up again. <laughs> I'm ready to fight now. God does not engage his enemies in battle without having the people of God, his own vessels that he can use. God will rather suspend the fight. God will rather keep quiet and ab be absorbing his thoughts. And those who, who, who fear God, those who, who are God's people, they will be shouting and murmuring, why is God keeping quiet? Why can't God do something? God, why can't? And God said, I'm not the problem. Oh. I'm looking for human vessels. I'm looking for containers that I can use. I don't engage my enemy just like that. Hallelujah. I'd like you to move and let's see the battle I'm talking about. First Samuel 17. Now, if you if you read from verse 1, I'll be reading and going. Sometimes I will skip. Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle. And we are gathered together at Shok Shoko, which belonged to Judah. They moved the battle to where? To Judah. Where is Judah? In the land of Israel. And pitched between Shoko and Azekah in Ephas Damim. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. Verse 8. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are you come out to set your battle in array? Am, I, am not I a Philistine? And ye servants to Saul, choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then will I be, then will we become your servants. But if I prevail against him and kills him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. Now let me halt here. The boasting, the challenge of Goliath was first a challenge against the Almighty God. But then here was a man who came out and donated himself on behalf of the army of his nation. He didn't say that he may not die in the fight. He says, give me a man. If I kill him, then my people will reign over you. But if he kills me, then you reign over us. In other words, Goliath was ready to die on behalf of his people. They are not getting my story again. He said, give me a man. If he kills me, no problem. At least my people will not die. You won't, they, you won't kill people in, in, in fight again. They will simply become your servant. You can reign over them. 
one of the things that the church lost, which Satan has given to his own army. Readiness to die. Why does God, God's army flee at battle? Because they love their lives. There is no readiness to die for Jesus. There is no readiness to suffer for him. And Goliath was very dramatic. He didn't say, let all of us begin to fight together. Uh-uh. You know, many times when it is a group, group action, a group fight, you don't mind. <laughs> we can all be doing it. <laughs> but the man said, uh-uh. one man. <laughs> Give me one man. Let me have one person who can volunteer that himself should die on behalf of you. For me, I am ready to die on behalf of my people. Is there anybody among you at all who can take a risk for your own God? Let him come forward. Honestly, everybody ran back. Nobody dared him. Are you a group Christian? Are you victorious only in the crowd of other believers and secretly you are a defeated person? Anytime in the privacy of your life the enemy, the devil and sin used to knock you down, mesmerize you. You are a Christian in the group of other Christians. But the devil is not interested in that. The devil does not mind when it's a group matter. He wants to engage you one by one. The fight that we are talking about is first a personal fight. Can I maintain my ground as a believer in any environment, in any condition? Can I stand my ground? The way, young man, you are going now, can we confidently, can your parents confidently send you, send you overseas to go and study? And after one year, you have not denied Jesus Christ. I'm talking of young people. Even those who go for youth service. They are bubbling as believers on campus. Singing and uh, demonstrating. Then just one year of youth service. Because they posted you into one college. Or into one, one village or one local government. That's where, that's, it's from that day your, your spiritual life collapsed. It pains me. That somebody left the south Part of Nigeria as a believer And went to the north In youth service And married al Haji. You don't understand what I'm talking about In less than one year Somebody that was singing in fellowship And jumping for Jesus Went Somewhere And could not stand so, you see, Goliath is not looking for group action. It's about one-on-one. -on -one. Can you stand your ground as a believer? Can you defend what you believe? Are your convictions deep enough? Do you have what it takes to stand up for Jesus? Or are you always bending to every environment? A chameleon Christian. That's why unbelievers used to say, I like your own Christianity, Joe. When unbelievers begin to like your own Christianity, you need to check well. Because the master you are carrying, the Lord Jesus you are carrying, the world never loved him. 
The world system was against Jesus all the time. But move beyond there, please. After Goliath, you know, something made it terrible that day. I was wondering, why is it that nobody could stand up to force Goliath? Verse 11, when Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now David was the son of Ephratite of Bethlehem, Judah, whose name was Jesse, and he had eight sons. And the man went among men for an old man in the days of Saul. Now listen to verse 13. And the three eldest sons of Jesse went and followed Saul to battle. And the names of his three sons that went to the battle were Eliab, the firstborn, next unto him Abinadab, and third, Shammah. I don't know if you saw something there. They said the three eldest brothers of, of Samuel, they were the ones who went to, with Saul to battle. Does it mean that it was only four people that were in that camp? Eh? Saul and the three of them, is, were they the four people that made up the army of Israel? So what did the Bible mean by the three eldest sons, they went to Saul, with Saul to the battle? It seems to me that they were prominent commanders in that army. It's like Shama, Eliab, Abinadab. We are, you know, able men, tall, huge, capable soldiers. They were commanders with him, adjutants. And those were the men that lined up to fight for God. Saul, the overall order. What is his record? What is his file in heaven? As at this time, what is his record with God? Rejected. <laughs> rejected. God had already said long ago, I have rejected him. Instead of him to resign, <laughs> he was still on the throne. Eh? For God. All these uh, three elders of, of, of uh, David, what is their own record? You can't remember. <laughs> huh? Rejected. Before this day, Samuel the prophet had come to their house. And he did the emergency sanctification for them. And invited them for sacrifice. And they had gathered. And then Samuel carried the horn of oil. And move towards Elias and said, Surely the lost anointed is before him. Huh? That means there were some very imposing external qualifications huh? that he had. But as he wanted to pour the oil on his head, God shouted from heaven and said, Samuel, don't try it. I have rejected it. I don't see as a man sees. Men look on the outward. But I look inside the heart. He has a wrong heart. He's carrying a wrong life. I can't use him. Rejected. Next, Shama. Rejected. Next, Elia. Uh, uh, Abinadab. Rejected. Listen. Did you hear any of them? Any of those seven sons of Jesse? Who fell down and grabbed the man of God by the leg and said, Sir, you came to Paul anointing and you dodged my own head. What is wrong with me? Please tell me so I can start I can start solving my case. Please help me. <gasps> Why will heaven overlook my own head and be looking for the heads of other people? What is wrong with me? None of them did like that. Instead, when it was time for battle, they came out. <laughs> we are soldiers, soldiers of the Lord. In the name of Jehovah, we shall conquer. Hey, we are so They lined and came out to fight for God. That is why God's army 
could not stand in battle. God's army will always flee from the enemy for as long as the spiritual leadership is porous. For as long as those who guide God's people, who shepherd God's people, who lead God's people, as long as their lives are out of form with the will of God, the army of God will always run away in battle. The army of God will run away in battle when God cannot find the right vessel, the right container to use. When the wrong lives are carrying the leadership of the army of God, God withdraws from battle and allows us to face our enemies with empty hands. We cannot enthrone Jesus when the lives that God is counting on, the lives God is depending on, they are lives whose hearts, whose lifestyle are contrary, whose lives cannot sustain the presence of God. That's what we saw. And I'm asking you this morning, please check. Am I such an Elia? I am the Shama of my women, women fellowship. I am the Abinadab of the youth fellowship. I am the Eliab of the choir, the singing team. I am that King Saul over the congregation of God's people. Please check. And check. Lord, why will you not use me? Don't be like these other brothers. When someone say you are rejected, then, uh, yeah, yes now. So let's see who you go accept now. Just stare and say, ah, what kind of nonsense is this? How will you be? You say, you say surely. Then you, you just uh, started embarrassing me. Eliab just stood by the side and was, 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 was raking and pacing up and down. The same thing, Shama. I've been at that. When about five or six of them came, <laughs> they must have been having unholy fellowship on the side. So we don't know what, what, what is he looking for, self. Huh? What kind of is he saying he himself is perfect? What nonsense is that? Huh? Let's see. Whoever he will, he will appoint here today, we will see. Instead of bending down, to do what? To repent. May that not be your case. You don't need to get angry with somewhere. And there are certain things that God will be bringing to us in this course of this meeting. Please don't get angry with any somewhere. Because it's not about somewhere. It's about heaven. It's about what God is saying about you. It's about what the Spirit of God is pointing straight to you and saying, your life is not usable. And you are saying, Lord, please help me. Take me as I am. I am ready today to come into your theater room for my life to be formed in the name of Jesus Christ. I like to move away from there because it is not, it's not David and the, the victory that I'm looking at. I just needed for you to see one battle in which the army of God could not perform. And why Jesus was saying what he said. Why Jesus could say, look. Why, is, why, why, why I am stating the conditions. 
And I'm saying, if you can't do this, if you can't do this, if you can't, I you as my disciple indeed. Because you cannot, you are not usable, you are not expendable. I can't rely on you like that. There's nothing. Because when the real war starts, you will chicken out. When, you, when the devil wants to engage you on personal level, he will push you down. That's why you've been falling. And let's see another war. First Samuel. The same first Samuel. This time, go back to chapter, I think chapter 4. First Samuel. Chapter 4, from verse 1, and the word of God, sorry, yes, and the word of Samuel came to all Israel. Now, Israel went out against the Philistines to battle and pitched beside Ebenezer, and the Philistines pitched in Aphek. Please, I want you to note. Where Israel's army was located. Where was it located, please? What is the meaning of Ebenezer? Huh? Let me hear you, sir. He that too has the Lord helped us. Okay? Help us. And so on. That is to say, they even chose to locate eh, themselves at the altar where God's visitation had taken place before. At Ebenezer. That's where they raised an altar and said, Kai, in this place, we saw the glory of God. God helped us here. So, as they wanted to fight, they chose to go to that place <laughs> where God performed and located their army. Huh? You know, at least in their mind, what, what were they expecting? That God will perform again. <laughs> After all, we are staying where? On Ebenezer. Costly assumption. It is not the, the victory of yesterday that we are talking about. We are talking of your current condition with God. We are not talking of uh, you, just, you are just a historical Christian. In 1994, ah, God used me like a lion. In fact, you even gave yourself one name. That year. That's not the matter now. There's a current battle to fight. And it is your current form that God wants to see. It is not about before. Verse 2. And the Philistines put themselves in array against Israel. And when they joined battle, <laughs> Israel was smitten before the Philistines. And they slew of the army in the field about 4,000 men. And when the people were coming to the camp, the elders of Israel said, Wherefore has the Lord smitten us today before the Philistines? What's the meaning of that question? It is abnormal for the people of God to be running away from the army of the enemy. The elders said, This is not normal. That we will come to battle and we are, we are discomfited. Wherefore? Why has the Lord smitten us? It is not the Philistines that we are killing them. It is that they, the Lord of hosts who fights their battles was against them. That scripture in Romans chapter 8 says, If the Lord be for you, if the Lord be for us, huh? who can be against us? Help me turn to your neighbor now. Neighbor, if the Lord be against you, 
Who can support you? They say, why? What happened? And look at the solution they quickly found. Huh? Let us fetch the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of Shiloh unto us, that when he comes among us, it may save us out of the hand of our enemies. Another assumption. So the people sent to Shiloh, that they might bring from thence the ark of the covenant of the Lord of hosts, which dwelt between the cherubim. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were there with the ark of the covenant of God. And when the ark of the covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted with a great shout, so that the earth rang again. And when the Philistines had the noise of the shout. They say, what means the noise of this great shout in the camp of the Hebrews? And they understood that the ark of the Lord was come into the camp. And the Philistines were afraid. For they said, God is come into the camp. And they said, woe to us. For there had not been such a thing heretofore. Woe unto us. Who shall deliver us out of the hand of these mighty gods? These are the gods that smote the Egyptians with all the plagues in the wilderness. Now, brothers, be strong. Quit yourselves like men, O ye Philistines, that we be not servants unto the Hebrews, as they have been to you. Quit yourselves like men and fight. And the Philistines fought. And Israel was smitten. And they fled every man into his tent. And there was a very great slaughter for there fell of Israel 30,000 footmen. And the ark of God was taken. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were slain. We need to begin to see issues very quickly now. Can you note that the elders, they said it's abnormal. For God's army to flee in battle. But when they now needed to find a solution, they didn't bend down to ask, So, what happened? Instead, they quickly agreed in their minds that. We need to go and carry the ark of God. For them, they thought that the ark of God is the same thing as God himself. They didn't know that the ark of God is only a symbol where God dwells. Where God comes to, to, to hover. The ark can only attract God, when the lives that surround the ark are acceptable to God. But you remember, Hophni and Phinehas, you remember who they were? Huh? <laughs> this ark, the people carrying them, were these priests that the Bible said, they did not know the Lord. These priests that the Bible said they were sons of Belial. They were these brothers who the Bible said God said they were kicking at his offering. They kicked at his offering. They disrespected God's offering. And they were covetous to grab and take what does not belong to them what belongs to God that's what they were grabbing and collecting they were taking the offering that God's people brought and they were messing up with it ah, and God said Eli 
Warn your children and do something about the situation. Eli would not do anything. He would just advise them and leave everything. They were carrying the wrong life. And yet they were carrying the ark. And this may they, they were treating God's offering common. But it's not only the meat. If it was only the, the offering of meat, the ram that they were playing with, that would have been a smaller matter. But even the offering, you see, the greatest offering of God's people is not even their money. It's their, their, themselves, their lives, them, their selves. When a brother, a sister, a man of God begins to, to tamper with the people of God that offer themselves to God, ah, heaven begins to look at you as an enemy. The people that came to the temple and came to seek God they came to meet with God. They are the greatest offering to the Lord. They came to present themselves at the altar as living sacrifice to the Almighty. And you were not afraid to start tampering with them. Sir, somebody came to you for counseling. To share the problem of her life and help her. And before you finish the counseling, you started cornering the offering of the Lord to your own selfish and carnal desires. When heaven looks at that, God, God does not tolerate. That was the life of Hophni and Phinehas. That they were molesting the women that came into the temple to serve God. And you that you are a sister, and you that you are a brother, what is wrong with you? That a man of God, that a brother, that a counselor, that a youth leader, that a, a music director. You came to look for God and the person began to, to, to reach out to molest your life. And you are still, you are still normal. You say, well, you know he's an anointed man. I don't want to tamper with it. You know, he said, touch not my anointed. And since I don't want to touch the anointed of the Lord, you see, in fact, he told me that if I really, really love the Lord, I should show the love by, by, by loving the man of God. In fact, that was what confused me. Actually, you are confused. You are very confused. Where are the sisters that will put their feet on the ground and help even a man of God when the man is overtaken? And say, sir, where did you land this, sir? You want to kill yourself? You want to destroy what God has put on you? If you want to kill yourself, don't use me as the one to kill yourself. And then the man will come out of his stupor. Something will shake him up. And he may repent before you. And you have saved a life. Are you hearing me at all? You have saved a life. But these are days that we are raising chickens as members. We are deliberately raising lives that are always wobbling. We are raising spiritual parasites. Who don't have survivor? Who cannot? Who can stand on their own? We are raising people who, even when you are falling as a leader, ah, they help you. In fact, they fall on you first. 
Say, she been a fall you want to do now. <laughs> Everybody fall. The offering of God's people. Now, when these men were told to bring the ark, they were not afraid. It was okay that they were doing those things around inside the temple and touching this. And, but you see, to bring the ark, the ark doesn't stay in the outer court where the congregation stays. The ark doesn't even stay in the holy place where the general priest minister. Excuse me, where does the ark stay? Inside the holy of holies. They were not afraid to use unholy legs to enter holy place. They were not afraid to use unclean hands to touch holy things. You know, one of the things we say when we want to take communion, we say, holy things for holy people. But in our day, somebody's life will be wrong. And he will jump and pick the microphone because he must lead the music. Yeah! I see the Lord. I see. I see the Lord. He is high and lifted up. And his glory fills the temple. The angels shall holy, 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 holy. With God's microphone. <laughs> Holy microphone and holy ground that you are standing. These are days when we no more know things that are sacred. You are using unclean hands to carry it. And you are shouting, I, I see the Lord. Where did you see him? Don't you know that only the pure in heart does what? Sees God. But they went inside. They went inside. And then they pulled it out. <laughs> I don't know why God does that kind of thing sometimes. There are sometimes you will do some wrong things. God will just remove his eyes. Maybe he will understand soon. God endured it. It was a big endurance. For God to allow them to enter there. Because you don't enter there anyhow. The high priest enters there after he has done some, some sanctification for himself. They entered and grabbed the thing. God didn't hit them immediately. They were supposed to have dropped down there. He kept quiet. In case sense will come to them. The Bible said, do you not know that the patience of God leadeth you to repentance? Sometimes you have been doing some things and going and nothing happened. And so when people talk, they, say, oh, they, are, just, they are just threatening people for nothing. <laughs> God doesn't do anything. This uh, wonderful God that, that is always uh, merciful. Yes, yes, God is merciful, but his mercy and patience is waiting and leading you unto what? Repentance. So they carried it. All the way on the road, God didn't touch them. Until they entered the battle to go and represent God. Ah, that's the one that God said, Hopefully and Phineas, you are going too much. You are taking too much. You are going too far now. Do you think I am a box? It's all right. You will see. So the glory of God, the Shekinah glory, departed. And they carried an empty box. Whereas the God of the ark had left, they were carrying an empty ark. Can I ask you, is there any such thing you are carrying? Outwardly, people suppose that you are carrying God. People suppose that you are sitting well with, with God. But the truth is that 
on the forehead, spiritually speaking, on your forehead, is written Ichabod. The glory has departed. You have a reason to hold God in this meeting and say, Lord, restore me to that glory again. And the Lord will hear your prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. You know the rest of the story. You know how they fought. But their fight was nothing. Because God was not with them. They not only met them carrying that box, they slaughtered the two of them and carried that box. Because at this time it's an empty box. Carried it and went back to their own country and carried it into their own shrine. He said, our God, Dagon, has captured the almighty God of Israel. You don't understand the insult. Very terrible. It was when they carried that box inside the, the, inside the temple and kept him beside their God and were praising their God that, hey, that mighty God that used to fight for Israel, <laughs> our own God don't capture him. In fact, he, he is inside bowing down to our, our God. <laughs> That was what provoked heaven. <laughs> hey, are you hearing me? And God came for himself to, to justify his name. God came uninvited. God came without anybody accompanying him. He didn't need any priest. He didn't need anybody. God came down on that box again. The Shekinah glory descended. As soon as he descended, he carried Dagon. <laughs> what did he do to get? He carried him. Knock him for, for ground. Put his face on the ground. <laughs> so he was worshipping the ark. <laughs> when the people came in the morning. <laughs> when they come, the priest, they came, they shout and say, Hey! <laughs> what happened? Kai. Somebody say, maybe it's this ark, oh, the thing has woken up. Oh. <laughs> maybe it's the thing that pushed him down. The other one said, no, no, no. It may not be, it may be a mistake. <laughs> Maybe we didn't position him well yesterday. <laughs> eh? So they, they, they stood it up and stood it again and left. When they came back the next day, you know what God did to the thing? <laughs> he carried him, eh? knock him for granted. He started, he pieces the leg <laughs> and the hand and knock off the head. <laughs> and the people returned. When they came this time, they said, ah, <laughs> this is obvious. This no, this no mistake at all. It is this man, the God has come back home. <laughs> and you know, the thing began to cause problem, began to cause problem, began to cause problem. They moved it from there. They carried it to one uh, place. People there started dying. God started killing people. Eh? The act was performing on his own. They will say, ah, Remove this uh, God of, carry this God of Israel from here. And they moved it. They were trying to take it to another side of the country. When the people heard that, they were trying to bring the ark to them. What did they do? <laughs> they said, they shout, hey, you want to finish up? Leave it where it is. Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Help me greet somebody and say, God can fight for himself. That's why Christians are not like Muslims. It is Muslims that carry sword and they are slaughtering for their Allah. Because their Allah is helpless. Their Allah is, 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 is a useless idol. And I can say it here. Huh? That's the truth. And that's why they must defend him. If anybody offends Allah, ah, they say, this our Allah is great, oh, wait. Then they gather machete and come. And say, we told you that Allah is great, you didn't know, you didn't agree. Allah Akbar! <laughs> Impotent God. That human beings 
that are, the, 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 the demon has confused human beings and made them victims. God will recover those our brothers in the name of Jesus. The power of the gospel will so spread that all these people, they are just victims. So you don't need to hate full and you don't need to hate us. I don't need. No, 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 no. How can you hate a slave? He's in bondage. They are just captured. Something has captured them and they are sincerely following what has captured them. The Almighty God. He came down in the land of the Philistines. When he troubled them so much, hey, they went and said, Priests, you are the, what shall we do? The fall of us will die. The priests went back to their God to go and ask their idol, How shall we do? <laughs> For the first time, their idol told them the truth. <laughs> He said, ah, you have touched a very dangerous thing. You, know? <laughs> you, you need to look for sacrifice. All the five Philistines represent, five laws representing the five uh, uh, districts of the, of, the, of the country. All of them should bring a ram. Bring this one, bring this one, bring this one. And you will be sacrificing. When you take one, uh, two to three kilometers, you make a sacrifice. And beg him, make him not touch you. You move again. <laughs> you sacrifice. And beg him, say, no, na, na, na confusion, make us come bring you in the first place. We are sending you home, sir. <laughs> and then you go again. You sacrifice again. That's what they kept doing. <laughs> Sacrificing and begging him <laughs> to go home in peace. <laughs> that they made mistake. <laughs> that it was when their people now then went and troubled him where he used to stay. And brought him to, to war. That they are very sorry. <laughs> they kept sacrificing and begging him. And following him. Until they got to a point. He said, when you reach there. Put it on. And allow the. That. Uh, cat. That is carrying it. Allow it. As the horse is moving and carrying it. Just watch. When he goes. Even when he comes to junction. Where there are diverse roads, he will follow the right road going to Israel. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Our God, he doesn't need human support. So when men are acting as if God is impotent, when you are doing something with a wrong life, I say, look, if I don't have God now, things will scatter. What do you mean by that? Somebody was told, hot, the kind of way you have messed up your life. You need, you need to slow down. Shift. Allow others to, 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 to take charge of the, the pulpit. He hardly managed to stay for for. for he was it one week. He rushed back. He said, if I wait, these people, I know they will take the church from me. Let me quickly come and help God with a wrong life. But you are saying, Lord, my case shall be different today in the name of Jesus Christ. It's obvious we cannot press beyond here. But I'd like you to note why God's people, why God's army flees in battle. When men love self, when men want to preserve their lives, Jesus said, Deny yourself. He said, No. When men are not willing to carry the cross, to be ashamed for following Christ. When men are not willing, no matter how they are armed, they will still run away from the battle. 
Because they are not yielded to the master. When you love the world system, this present world, when you are seeking to please the world, when the things of this world have captured your heart, and you see yourself in the battle, in the moment of conflict with the enemy, you will turn your back. You will flee. When you move and the life is such that God cannot move with because you are moving alone you will turn back in battle. Eliab, Shama, Abinada all of them they could not stand up when God was needing a man to stand for him. Saul could not. And can I point out what, what also happened to the son of Gideon in Judges chapter 8? His father had captured Zim, Zebra and Zamuna, the kings that were, that were fighting his people, captured them and brought them before this young man. And then gave him his sword. Gideon is standing. All the other soldiers are standing. He said, rise up and kill him. Slaughter him. The boy stood up. <laughs> As he stood up. This is how the, the sword was da dancing in his hand. Dancing in his hand. He looked at the face of Zebra. <laughs> he, 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 he put down his hand. He could not. And then Zim, did those two kings, they looked at Gideon. They said, Gideon, what are you doing? Rise up and do it yourself. It takes a man. This is but a youth. As a man is, so is his strength. What makes someone weak to engage the devil is inside. What makes you unable to stand in victory against the enemy and to enthrone Jesus where you are? It's not even first about the people around there. It's first a deficiency in your own life. There's something about you, ma, and the other is not, is not congruent. Something about you that is of double life, double standards. So how will you stand? The weakness was inside. What made him unable to slaughter came not from outside. Not because of the face of those people. After all, was David not a youth when he slaughtered the great Goliath? He was still a youth. He was not yet qualified to enter the army. But that didn't matter. The deficiency was inside. And I'm asking, what is it about your life that can weaken you in battle? Before we begin to deal and move on to strategies and wisdom and methods and how we are going to battle to enthrone him before we begin to look and press into receiving the impartation and the anointing of God's spirit that will equip us to push the boundaries for our God. The first matter is what is the strength of my life? How is my life yielded in obedience to the word of God? How is the Holy Spirit in control? How is he in charge? As many as are led, as many as are moderated by the Spirit, as many as 
uh, uh, as many as the spirit guides their lives as many as yields their lives in submission to the will and, and purpose of God as many as have surrendered for God to have his way in their lives they and only they are the sons of God As we pray this morning, again, I'd like to ask you, what can make you to flee in battle? That thing is not outside, it's inside. Jesus said, it's not about the 20,000. No, 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 no. I'm not bothered about the, the how 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 bogus my enemy is no and the problem is not about the weapon because god has the equipment god has the grace the anointing to release upon our lives for the battle but where is the problem it's in the inner strength it is in the commitment it is in the discipleship of those that God in, intends to use those that have called themselves by the name of the Lord and they are standing for him those who have come to say we, we are on the Lord's side Savior we are dying how much is God having the dominion over their lives those who do not carry the kingdom mind who are still concerned with all about themselves those who want to preserve their lives Goliath said uh -uh. it's not group matter give me a man who is willing to forget about himself and stand for his God I pray that God himself we speak beyond us shall we rise please as we pray together spirit of the living god fall afresh on me spirit of the living god fall all afresh on me spirit spirit of the living god walk afresh on me spirit of walk afresh on me walk afresh on me. holy spirit spirit of the living walk afresh on me Walk afresh on me, Holy Ghost, Spirit of the living. Oh, walk afresh on me. Break me, Lord, break me. Melt me, mold me, and fill me. Spirit of the living God. Walk afresh on me, break me, Lord, break me, melt me, mold and use me, Lord. Oh, Lord, Spirit of the living God, walk afresh on me, break me, Lord, break me. Lord, please, Spirit of the living God, walk afresh on us. I will pray for you, and then I would like you to pray in response. Father, here we are this moment. We are needing you to help us beyond ourselves. Lord, we are asking that you will convince us to 
present ourselves at the theater. You convince us, Lord, to sign the consent form to allow you to operate upon us everything that is unlike you in our lives. Every nature, every attitude. Lord, whatever it is, every love of self, everything that makes our lives disqualified, like Hophni, like him, Phinehas, whatever makes us, Lord, unusable, like Abinadab, like Shammah, whatever makes heaven to withhold the anointing oil from our heads, oh God, come among us this moment. Engage our hearts one by one. Spirit of the living God, walk afresh, fresh upon us. Come Lord, and do for us what only you can do. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'd like you to pray now. Respond to God yourself. Beg the Lord. Appear before him as a person. Want you to cry to heaven. Lord. Handle my case. Oh God. Qualify me. Qualify me for your use. Lord Almighty. There have been many battles I, I, I flee from. I fled from. Many battles. Where I would have stood for God. But I was overcome. I was defeated. Why I'm not able to stand up for Jesus. In my family today. Self-interest. Selfishness. I love my life more than others. I love the things of this world. That's why I cannot stand in the family again. That's why I'm no more a voice in my father's house. I have compromised the faith. Lord Almighty, in the market, when I came into the market, you know, you know how I used to how to shout the gospel. You know how I used to stand? Until as guests were coming to my shop, the guests started to neutralize me. I lost my boldness. I lost my confidence. As other people in the market, they are now pointing at me. I said, look at that man. Look at that young man. He said that he said he, he, he used to preach. He said he's born again. If, it's, if that's how people are born again I don't want to be born again that's what that's what closed your mouth that's what has dried up the fire in your soul what is it that is not allowing you to run as heaven wants you to run is it fear fear Gideon's son was afraid Unbelief. Ephraim was armed, but he ran away from battle. Unbelief. Lord, handle the unbelief in my life. Use your surgical knife. Remove unbelief. The root of unbelief. Dig it out. Dig it out. Oh God. As this Gideon son looked at Zebra and Zamuna, fear, fear greet him. What is the reason for your fear? Tell the Lord, Father, I must die to fear. I must die to fear. Use your surgical knife. Use it upon me. Until fear is driven out of my heart. Karaba sakatari baba soria. Parakato sonto robuskai. Rikanda raba sondo robus kondo robuskai abadabaya. Liaraba sandia talabro. 
yakata yakusali braba sandaya when the enemy engage me one on one lord i will not be afraid i am ready lord make this my heart ready ready even to die for the kingdom to die for jesus kara sure bashindaya rekete kekusalia these are the days of battle these are the days of battle who is on the lord side who is on the lord side why will the army run away in the day of battle everything in me that cripples me anything in my life that makes my life important lord i say no let your mercy come upon me this day marakasati babu rekata yabaya baya basuri baya bada rekanda yaya ya huri bas kumbara basandi ya kandoro bos kondoro bos kaya oh god holy things for holy people holy things for holy people the battle of the lord is holy the battle of the lord is holy holy things for holy people In the name of Jesus God is asking Are you ready Absolutely ready To give me the liberty To use my knife To cut off The impotency of your life So that you can be positioned for battle I present my consent form and I sign it. Please carry that form towards this altar. But at your at your you are free now. In your in your theater room, wherever you will take me, whatever human being you will use, whatever situations you will use, only make sure Lord you cut off everything that is making me unusable. Every deformity of my heart I sign the form here Lord take over Lord take over Lord take over Lord take over I don't know what you are waiting for To say Lord I am ready this morning I am ready oh God I am ready I cannot just be A Christian That is That is, that is not Is not on fire for you A Christian that is not usable Restore the glory upon my life. Use your knife, oh God. Use your knife. Use your knife. I give you the authority. Every issue of my life, every junction of my life, I am willing and I'm ready. Take over, Lord. Take over, Lord. Take over, Lord. Take over, Lord. Lord, take over. Lord, take over. I sign it, Lord. I sign it. I sign it. 
Lord, I sign it. It is you, O oh God. Lord, I sign it. I'm ready. Every condition of discipleship you are stating, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to be made. I'm ready, Lord, for you to make my life. Pastor Kasai. Lord, I'm ready. Lord, I'm ready. Lord, I'm ready. Lord, I'm ready. This is a moment of consecration. I bring the sacrifice. I'm ready. This battle is holy. Karabashindala brava. Porobashindala brahus calibra. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, here we are again. Presenting our consent form. With our signature on them. We are saying, Lord, have your liberty to deal with us as you will. Until, Lord, Every deformity of our lives have been rooted out. Every life of unbelief, every hypocrisy, every fear, every deformity of the heart, every wrong life, every wrong heart, every love of self. Oh God. Whatever makes us preserve our lives and not throw it freely at your hand. We are begging you this afternoon. Holy Spirit, do a deep work in our hearts. Let the work, O oh God, be thorough. Release your hand upon us. Release your fire upon us. That purges, that cleanses, the fire that roots out every attitude that has kept us stranded and, and unable to engage our enemy. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Let this altar be the, 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 the place where Lord our struggle was terminated. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we trust you. That we are rising from this place. Totally yielded. When you broke Jacob, he was totally broken. We are rising from here. Whatever it will take you. To bring us to that brokenness. Have your liberty to do it in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Receive praise for hearing us. For answering our prayer. In Jesus name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Amen.